start with a huge uh, thank you to uh, the chair of the Committee on Veteran Services, uh, Chaim Deutsch. Uh, I have the opportunity to work with him in this committee now as contracts chair and also as uh, he is the chair of the uh, Jew uh, committee, uh, the, the Jewish caucus. And uh, wherever he leads, he does amazing work, groundbreaking work, and we're so glad to have him in these leadership roles. Uh, I want to thank those of you who are in the audience today, and I want to uh, thank Chaim for his partnership in social media outreach on Veterans Day. Uh, his team created an amazing video. We created a graphic asking our veterans to come out and let us know, you served our country. How can our city serve you? And that's what I'm hoping that we can get into today. If you are uh, watching the live stream or you're watching at home, and it is within 72 hours of November 19th, 2019, we'd love to hear from you. And you can uh, submit your testimony uh, to us in whatever length, in whatever format you like. You can also tweet me at Ben Kalos. You can tweet Chaim at? At Chaim Deutsch. At Chaim Deutsch. And, uh, And in terms of the testimony, you can submit it to correspondence at council.nyc.gov. Uh, I'm joined here by uh, uh, Daniel Gorman. He is an MSW candidate from Fordham University. He's currently placed in our district office as part of his MSW field placement. Uh, he is also a veteran who served four years in the Navy and 16 years in the Army National Guard for a tw total of 20 years. I want to thank him for his service and continue to work with him on making sure these services are available. With, regard, with the creation of the Department of Veteran Services in 2016, something that I was proud to vote on, uh, we now have an agency that can provide services to our veterans. And there's two ways to do it. It's either for you to staff up and hire a huge team of people to provide direct services from your agency, which frankly and honestly is my preference. I always believe government employees can do most things better. But in other instances, it can be very helpful to have partners in the community. I'm a particular fan of nonprofits over for-profits. Not sure why we need to give anyone any profit on a government contract. Uh, that being said, uh, it can be challenging uh, to bring in contracts. Currently, you have about $2 million in contracts while we have about a million veterans in our city, plus their family members who need your support, which comes out to uh, a little less than about $2 per veteran, uh, which means we do need more support for our veterans than just $2 per veteran. And one of the questions we have today is, is the current framework that you have of using procurement through a different agency working? Or could you benefit from having your own uh, chief uh, contracting officer, what a lot of folks call in the slang a uh, ACO, agency chief com uh, contracting officer, and uh, what that would look like and how long we can get you to a place where you need to be. And then similarly, uh, as we're talking about this, what kinds of services do you believe the veterans need? What are you currently offering? And uh, let's just say you had $94 billion. Let's just say you had that. What would you spend it on to help our veterans? Uh, and as we enter this holiday season, Thanksgiving isn't too far away. We, we have a homeless crisis in our city and a portion of that crisis, a face of that crisis it are, is our veterans. Uh, I don't ever want to see another uh, veteran on our street. We, we have a duty to care for them in the same way that they cared for our country. So I want to uh, thank you, uh, thank Chaim, and uh, I will pass it back to him uh, or our council to swear in the first panel. above and beyond to make sure that they recruit outside of those two uh, specific hospitals, but the program is operationalized specifically to have um, staff at those two sites for the pilot phase. 
tell me a little bit about Vet Connect. Uh, so if somebody needs resources, what's the value of the contract with Vet Connect? 514000 per year, sir. And uh, it, I, I, I'm on the Vet Connect website. There seems to be a, a veritable laundry list of services and service providers. Uh, who reimburses them for providing services to veterans? All those services are free of charge to the veterans, sir. So those are not for uh, those are not for profits. Right, but non for profits, the the, the 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 money has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it either comes from generous donors, and God bless those people, but otherwise it usually comes from government. I'm the contract chair of a lot of the, and, and it was in my opening, a lot of the services that the government would otherwise offer or should otherwise offer go through nonprofits. So who's paying the nonprofits for the services they are providing directly to, non to, to veterans? They have raised their own funding for that. So do, you, do, you, do you think it's it's fair to uh, lay the services that we're going to provide to veterans on the backs of nonprofits and tell them that they need to provide the funding for the veterans and that we're off the hook? Or do, what, what do you think we should do in terms of supporting those nonprofits? Those nonprofits um, offered and volunteered to be part of that program due to their capacity because they want to serve our constituency base. So at any point, if they have an issue with capacity or an issue with funding, they're not on the hook by any means. Uh, it's a relatively dynamic relationship. I, I guess where I'm going is, is there an opportunity? So, so for instance, there's on the Vet Connect, one of the projects is the Wounded Warrior Project. Right. If they have high need, is there an opportunity for the city to provide direct funding to the Wounded Warrior Project or if they are unable to meet the need, then just they're, they're out of luck and they won't get any support from here. We'll, we'll leave one of them behind. I would have to look into that, sir. But that's okay. a good point. Should, should, we, sh should the Department of Veteran Services be providing support to the nonprofits that are providing services to our veterans financially? Trying to be very straightforward about the question. I, yes. if, if I wasn't straightforward, I'm, you can let you can ask me how I can clarify. No, it just uh, areas of expertise. <laughs> just want to let her touch on that. We appreciate yeah. that, Chair. Um, so we are uh, making our one of our first forays into working with providers, um, and that relates to the announcement that the mayor made on Veterans Day around creating uh, a fund for legal services. Um, so that is our our first foray into that space. So, okay, let me, I, I'm just going to try to be very, very clear. So there are nonprofits. They are providing direct services to our veterans. And you've testified that they're not getting any money from the city. And so I'm asking if you would agree that you as Department of Veteran Services can provide direct funding to the nonprofits uh, in order to serve our veterans better. I think that's going to be the subject of some internal discussion with our commissioner and some of the senior staff. I wouldn't want to answer that right away without a little more feedback and contacts from them, sir. If the commissioner can't show up in their so, – so, so, so I know I try to send people with authority. I'm an attorney. When I've gone to court, uh, I can't show up in court without authority to settle, without authority to, to move forward. Um, I, I understand in the military, generally, you, you might have somebody at the top who says this is the battle plan, but when you send somebody out into battle, you're going to send them with the ability to, to be in command and what have you. So I guess I'm, I'm, I understand your deference to, to the new commissioner, but they sent you here, and they knew what we were going to ask you about. So um, – I, I would just love, even even in your own personal capacity or what you would do if you were commissioner, but just whether or not we could, whether or not having a chief procurement officer would help you with this. So I guess I'll just ask one more time, like, would having a chief procurement officer help you work with the specific nonprofits to provide specific services to our, non, to our veterans, and should the city be working with our nonprofits and funding them to provide more services to our veterans? I think that's really going to be dependent on future conversations with OMB, sir. It's not just 
about the commissioner. I think it's a, it's a bigger administration, and I want to make sure everyone's read in on that. I'm just going to be honest. This was the softball question. Uh, we're, I, I'm the contracts chair. We have $16 billion in contracts, many of which with nonprofits. I think people in this audience, people watching at home, expect government to use their tax dollars to provide services to those who need them most, particularly our veterans, and at least for my part, our, our, our homeless veterans. And so I'll, I'll pass it on to s whoever has questions. Back to Chaim. Uh, thank you. Um, so firstly, is a question? No. No, no, I'm good. So you mentioned uh, you pay for Would be happy with the process. Eighty percent. It's yep. a little more than half. So why why wouldn't the rest be happy? I think is again because of designation. Sometimes they're designated. No, no I'm saying if I'm talking about the four hundred, the ones that oh, were designated right away. Well, some of those have other issues that are, uh, are uh, not up front. So they may have issues passing responsibility determination. Uh, they may have issues with documentation and being responsive to staff. Um, so that varies across the board. Uh huh. Yeah, I'd like to um, uh, recognize Councilmember Barron, who's going to address. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna gonna give it back to my co-chair. With regards to uh, pay for success, uh, who is currently administering that contract? Who is the city actually contracting with? So the city is contracting with, um, it's called the Payers Alliance for Veterans Employment, which is uh, a subsidiary legal entity that was created to hold the city's outcomes payments um, in conjunction with the VA. Uh, and so that's Payer Alliance for Veterans Employment LLC. That's correct. And the contract, as you mentioned before, is $675,000, which is matched one-to-one -one by the federal government through the VA. So the full contract is $750,000. The procurement value of that contract, which is the amount of money that the city is on the hook for, is $650,000. $75,000 is being provided by a private sector funder to help defray the city's costs. According to our committee report and according to the New York City Controller's website on Checkbook NYC, the value of the contract is $675,000. Uh, that being said, one of the things we noticed when we were preparing for this hearing, and I double-checked on Checkbook just now, is that to date the contract has had zero dollars spent. This is a contract that started in December of last year, so we're, we're now almost a year later. Is that because no one has found a job through this program, or is it just that we've asked them to work without getting paid for a year? Uh, I guess, what, why are there zero dollars spent to date? Uh, those, uh, so the payments are predicated on uh, outcomes reports that are generated by a third party evaluation. So the evaluation hasn't happened yet. Uh, when that evaluation does happen, the city will receive a report which will trigger our outcomes payment, and that's when the money will be spent. It will happen in this fiscal year. So it's almost a year. How often do these evaluation reports happen? Um, I have to get back to you on the cycle of the evaluations, but one, one did occur in the fall, and we're waiting for the report to come out. Okay, we've been joined by Council Member Eugene. Uh, as you as you evaluate, uh, so the next one, so that one was done in the fall. When was it done in the fall? Uh, in September. Okay, so it's November now. Why did it? Why why was it taking it more than two months to get a? It, it's a it's a third party uh, evaluator named Westat, and they're the ones who generate the the report to us. So okay. they've done the review of the program. And then they will they will generate that report, which will trigger an outcomes payment. Do you have any information on what they found? Have we helped a single veteran? Yes, 
Yes, there are inv veterans enrolled in the program. How many? Um, I have to get back to you with the specific numbers of that. I want to make sure that you have accurate information, but we have heard positive stories from the program thus far. We've received testimonials as well, okay. which I'm happy to share, sir. Thank you. In the mayor's management report, uh, according to the mayor's management report, your budget in fiscal year 19 is was $5.4 million. Uh, does that sound accurate? That's correct. Uh, and of that, how much did you spend in fiscal year 19? Did you spend all of it, or did you have headcount that went unhired, or what have you? Um, we, we're not prepared to answer that specific question, sir, but we can get back to you are with you, that information. Are you shorthanded at all at your agency? Are there any positions that are unfilled? We do have some vacancies just from general turnover. Uh, I guess the, the reason I'm asking is it, if we, we looked at the budget, it looks like you actually got a uh, cut in your budget in fiscal year 20, so you now went from $5.4 million down to $5.3 million. So I'm just curious what impact that has and what budget you would need to see in order to have a uh, chief uh, contracting officer and what budget increases you will need in order to actually do contracting with the veteran service organizations. Uh, it's noted, sir, and I'll just have to take that back to my agency. You mentioned in your testimony that you have a client relationship management tool. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what that is, what software platform you're using, and how that interacts with Vet Connect, how that interacts with the uh, Pay for Success, and uh, how you came to the number for the MMR of that you were working with 2,896. Uh, veterans and family members. So our composite, uh, our consumer relationship management tool is a Microsoft Dynamics program that we built. Um, that program, every organization, every constituent or client, and every event that we attend, we uh, record it in the CRM. Everyone at the agency has their own access to the program with their own specific dashboards per line of action. Uh, for example, if we interact with uh, a client, and we refer them to VetConnect on that coordinated care platform, They that note and that referral date time, who they talk to, et cetera, will be recorded in the CRM. Uh, but at that point, they will enter a different database. They will then be reengaged when after they've been connected to services or if they had an issue getting connected to services. And, sir, I can speak to how um, the Pay for Success project works. So all of that client information is housed by the VA, um, and we do not receive that client information unless that person gets connected to DVS for whatever reason, for resources or for uh, support. Uh, but those, those individuals are not put into our database for privacy reasons. How, so I guess, how will we know that Pay for success is working, and, and when will you have me? How, how soon can you give me a number of the folks that at least were served, even if their outcome hasn't been certified yet? Uh, we could do that before the week is over. We could get those numbers to you, um, and we're happy to share more information about the success of the project as well once we get that formalized uh, evaluation report. I also want to note one other uh, thing that you brought up, sir, previously about the contract value. It is $675,000 that the city is on the hook for. Um, and then that is matched dollar for dollar by the VA. An additional $75,000 is coming from a private funder. So the full contract value amount is seven fifty. dollars Thank you. Uh, with, so I guess one of the things is you are tracking the number in the management, mayor's management report, you are tracking the number of people, uh, f veterans and families that you're engaging, uh, but it seems like there might be disconnects. So if somebody goes directly to Vets Connect, that doesn't get in your system. And if somebody goes directly to the uh, pay for success, that doesn't go into your system. Well, let so, me just so jump you, in there it, with it the. It may be under reporting. Well, with the Vet Connect, uh, no, because they we have a contract with IVMF, uh, a data sharing contract. So they they push regular reporting to us uh, throughout at an as needed basis or throughout the quarter. 
Um, so, and their reporting format looks much like ours. We use the same language when it comes to engaged and assisted veterans. And then um, as it relates to pay for success, you know, the evaluation of that program will provide us with numbers as well. And I guess just on the, the Vet Connect, it, when I went to the website, it generally has uh, the fact that they offer assistance with disability, but it doesn't actually say who or what or, or what have you. It just says go into our general intake and fill out the form. Is there a, a way to make sure that the Vet Connect site actually gives specifics? Uh, I, I guess one of the things is, do, do you find in working with veterans that sometimes they have a lot of pride and sometimes they don't want to take assistance? I have that problem in my district with residents who qualify for SNAP who won't apply for it. Have you ever had that occasion? Yeah, I th my coordinators um, really in, in a lot, of, and the, the majority of my team has been enrolled for quite some time, and that is often an issue that we face with veterans from all war eras is that that pride and not necessarily being so vocal and willing to accept services from the city. Is, um, there, is there an opportunity on the Vet Connect site to actually spell out the different program? M a lot of the services that I see under your services tab where every single other tab directs you to, there's a lot of uh, education resources, but there's no details on is it, a free, is it free credits, is it discounted credits, uh, is it an undergrad, is it a graduate, like, there, there's no details, there's uh, uh, assisted, there, there's Bronx uh, Veterinary Center with a picture of a cat and a dog, so I'm imagining that it has to do with animals, not veterans, uh, but they may have some sort of, uh, and th they may have some sort of relationship where they're willing to provide a discount for veterans who have animals, maybe they provide uh, service animals, I, 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 there's no details. So regarding that, i uh, be more than happy to have a conversation with our providers about uh, maybe being more transparent with program descriptions, but an added vet benefit of VetConnect is, you know, they are called within a couple days and then based off of the issues that they um, maybe came in with and then additional service requests that might have been discovered in that subsequent conversation, that there is a specific coordinator tailored uh, to walk them through that process and explain what services they would have available, so as not to overload them with information, um, but tailor the needs of the program to the client. But for their own informational purposes, I agree and think that being more transparent with program services per organization is a good idea. I, I appreciate the the agreement. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it's just one of those things where I don't want to overwhelm people, but if folks saw, oh, if I go to Hunter, I could get X, Y, Z, and I go there, folks might say, you know what? I, I don't feel bad about taking this specific resource. This seems right. Uh, and I guess the only other piece is uh, you mentioned that it might be a couple of days in terms of quality of service and even sales. Uh, I've seen that generally if somebody touches base with you in a perfect world, you get back to them immediately. Uh, do you have any quality of service related to VetConnects where there's a specific time frame you want them to respond in? There is. The original contract, um, I, I believe, one of the program uh, tools was around 10 days, but we've lowered that to uh, it's 48 hours on average. Uh, we reach back out to the client, and then for a client to be successfully connected to services and for their case to be resolved, um, it's less than a week. Okay. I would just uh, urge that if you're doing anything more than same day or immediate, then just let people pick a time. Uh, on on the form, uh, so that they that you can manage the expectations. I'd like to pass it over to Councilmember Barron, who has a question. Thank you, sir. Thank you to the chairs and thank you to the panel for coming and sharing your information. Just one general question: What is the relationship that you have with City University with CUNY, both in terms of contractually as well as the services that are provided specifically to veterans? Thank you for that question, ma'am. Um, so DVS has an initiative called Veterans on Campus, uh, which is a program that enables us to work directly with the uh, students.